Ladies and gentlemen, it's looking like we're just about live. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hi. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Dustin Cormier, and welcome to How to Rock Spirit. Appreciate, uh, appreciate you guys coming today. Yeah. Uh, today we are going to talk about a subject that I think is important in general, the moon sign. Uh, this is a tryout run for this new series that I've been embarking on. Uh, for the first time, I'm going to try to break down how the moon sign relates to our erotic nature. Uh, but I'm also going to talk a lot, a lot about the moon sign. Then we're going to talk about Venus and how Venus relates to the expression of the moon, the fortification and security of the moon, and Venus is really, uh, I'm going to talk from a sort of Vedic standpoint, I'm a tropical Vedic astrologer, we're going to try to wrap a little bit about how Venus is kind of the goalie that attracts good feelings towards the lunar nature. Venus is a power conductor for the moon's ability to adapt in a healthy way to its environment and to its own nature, to the whole in integral emotional subconscious complex of the human personality, which is trying to express the sun. We love to talk about the sun nature it's uh, hugely important in the erotic, and it's hugely important. It's the center of our universe, you know. What's interesting about the moon is that while the, everything revolves around the sun, the moon is the only planet that revolves around the Earth. Hmm. Now, what does that mean? Many people in Vedic astrology talk about how if you can't get someone's birth time, you can still get a pretty good deep reading by the nature of the moon. Where the moon is from the sun, where the moon's sign is especially where its nakshatra is. If you get into Vedic and you get into the nakshatras, that's just a whole other can of worms. And I'm going to be talking about that eventually. So, Venus is the conductor, the, the dignity of Venus helps to hold and fortify the sense of the self which the moon gets. Now, if you've got an ill-placed moon, uh, if you've got like aspects by an enemy to the moon, uh, the, Mars isn't exactly an enemy, but if Mars is aspecting the moon, any malefic aspecting the moon, really, if Saturn, by Saturn's aspects, are aspecting the moon, uh, this damages the capacity of the self to trust its own subconscious needs. The environmental needs, the nurturing needs of the self, which support the self in doing what it wants to do. An ill-placed moon, an ill-dignified moon, a moon like in the 10th house, the moon doesn't do that well in the 10th house. If the moon is closer to Scorpio, it's not ten generally a good thing. Uh, if the moon is past full, it tends to be a more malefic expression of the moon. That's an important one, actually. All these things that can damage the moon. When the moon is damaged, it loses its ability to consider it, to cultivate an importance of understanding the self, of understanding the whole subliminal subconscious personality, so understanding one's family, what happened in one's family, the connection to one's family, to one's, in, and to other people, to, to society on a really 
sustainable way. Friendships. The moon has a lot to do with friendship. And if you don't have any of these emotional network connections to other people, it's going to be harder for you to stay confidently feeling at an earthly level. Because remember, the moon follows the earth. That's such an important figure for us to consider. And it's also important to consider that Venus follows the sun. That is hugely important for what we're trying to discuss here today. Think about it. The moon follows the earth. The earth is like our, it's our genes. It's our like ancestral energy. Um, oh, I just realized I should say, folks, if you want to, I'm, I'm getting some viewers now. If anybody wants to make any comments live, we, uh, please feel free. This show is all about talking and having a live vibe. I like the live stream thing. That's why we're doing it live. And I'll try to answer any questions that I can. I'm just signing in right now. The, so Venus follows the sun, <coughs> revolves around the sun, while the moon revolves around the earth. So the moon is deeply in connect with who we are on earth what our past is. <laughs> Beautiful. Nice to see you guys. Nate West, Goosey, Odd Mars, in conjunct Venus and Leo in the fourth house. <clears throat> we'll have to think about that. I'm first for now I'm gonna break down what the moon's all about. <clears throat> but thank you guys for coming. Please feel free to make any comments and we'll, we will try to speak to them as it relates to the content of the conversation. Venus is like an important ground to the spiritual nature in us. The spirit is just bursting through. The sun. The sun is just like bursting through everybody. It's a big part of just our normal nature. How we are as an expression of our sun sign gives us a vitality and it makes us not have to work as hard at what we do because it's such a primal part of our spiritual energy um, <clears throat> and Venus Venus is like the doorway which keeps the Sun channeled properly and if we can channel through Venus our Sun nature our erotic nature our primary inspiration that we try to project on ourselves. Venus lets us be real about that, lets, lets us laugh at ourselves at a personality level, lets us be able to communicate with people as per what the sun's trying to do, as per what we're trying to do. That's the thing, is that Venus, Venus tries to ground and fortify a, a satisfying network of friends and people and, com and a, an ability to communicate in ways which fortify our sun and help us project the sun. The moon floating around earth allows us to empathize with other people. We By giving ourselves time to understand ourselves and the moon gives you a capacity to relate to other people, to what they want. Venuses connect with Venuses and moons connect with moons. And when you have a, a positive relationship with your Venus sign and your moon sign, when they have a positive relationship, the moon knows what it wants, and it knows how to communicate to others about what it wants in a comfortable way. And in a, a self-aware way on the moon's end of things. So... The moon is a very important part. It, it's like, you know, they say it's the shadow of our, it's the what holds the sun, the moon, the crescent moon, right? What I want to do with this series is I want to get at the nature of the moon. Voila, we just talked about it. We're going to talk about the moon in Pisces, nature. Then we're going to talk about Venus. And finally, then we are going to describe as per befitting my whole Scorpio thing I've been doing lately, 
uh, we're going to talk about how we can relate this in an erotic and juicy way when it comes to the erotic nature of Pisces in, in bed plus your Venus sign and how your moon sign, Pisces, relates to the 12 different Venus types. Because we're going to learn when it comes to you in bed, the Venus sign connects with the moon sign and has a lot to do with the expression of our erotic, comfortable nature. The sun sign kind of says what we like to do, project our minds towards in bed. But the moon is like how we feel comfortable in the environment, in the setting, in the sort of background context of the connection with somebody, especially as it relates to Tantra. Whenever we read the sun sign things, we can even see it as being a description of like real, like not a, exactly tantric per se, although you can make tantric connections with lots of different people. The sun sign descriptions are just really hot in those, in those sextrology books that I read in my other, part, my other videos, my sextrology videos. The sun is a hot thing in like... When you describe the sun nature, it's easy to just say, this is what I am like, like this is my, my nature that I'm trying to project. So we can talk about the sun sign with all the 12 different combinations of the other people in the zodiac and see how that hot projecting nature comes out. And it almost feels like, you know, oh, I want to go and bang all these different people to just get this sense of how my nature reflects on all these different types. The moon is less about like what you want to get like project and get to the heart of in in an erotic way what you want to express that's really like the sun what you want to express the moon is kind of like how you want to express it it's the content of your consciousness it's the context of your subconscious personality when we talk to the moon sign in somebody we're talking to who they are when they're not trying, right? It's like, who is the person that you're talking to when you're not both trying to build up some sexy erotic thing? It's the cigarette afterwards with the person that you lean on. And then you say like, that was good, baby. You good for another one? And like the moon sign will say like, what am I feeling right now? You know? And it's also like when you get really deeply tantric with another person, especially a woman, I find, uh, when you get to this tantric layer, this emotional place with a woman or with anybody, I should say. Tantra, I'm kind of a transgender interested person. And there's a, I feel there's a feminine and a masculine in both sexes. But, well, yeah, sun and moon, right? This is the layer that you get at with the person when you try to enjoy all of who the person is. In which case you get a deeper juiciness. Uh, whereas with the sun, it's not about all that the person is. It's about who they are when they're fully engaged in their banging mode. And that's what you are in your sun sign. Moon is different. Moon is all, is, is a, it's a, it's a deeper connection not just when your moon sign connects with the other person's moon sign, but when your moon connects with any all the parts of the other person's chart. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, moon and sun are really the big ones, Goosey, for sure. And the rising sign, of course. And we're going to be talking about that for now. Let's start breaking into our other authors' interpretations of what the, the moon's all about. I would like to start, you might recognize this if you've seen any of my sun sign, moon sign combinations. This is Stephen Arroyo's chart interpretation handbook. It's a pretty good little, really breaks things down in a psychological way that you can see in a pretty practical, earthly sort of way. <clears throat> now, what's the moon all about? The element of the moon's sign represents an attunement from the past that manifests automatically 
a mode of feeling and being that one needs to be aware of in order to feel inwardly secure and at home with oneself. One needs to be aware of in order to feel inwardly secure and at home with oneself. Not just like that you're really entertaining somebody. You know, the, the sun is more of a 10th house vibe. Just like, look how good I look to this person. The moon is looking at the root of the chart, the root of your emotional experience, and saying, how comfortable do I feel, regardless of this other person? But, of course, the other person's not making you comfortable. If you don't have a strong moon, you might not even care about that. I know I don't feel comfortable, but my son is expressing, so fuck whatever. And that's, you know, that's a layer of the erotic, but... We're reading about the moon in order to glean a sense of the cream of the milk that is the erotic experience. 